Hello, and welcome to Podcast Data Analytics. My name is Brian Pod, and I'm a Cognos developer. I wanted to start today's video by giving a special thanks to Kwame Iwuku, my mentor and the founder of Coglytics. If you haven't already been over to his webpage yet, I would highly recommend checking it out. Links will be in the description below. Today's video is all about the new dashboard features within IBM Cognos Analytics 11.1.7. As you can see from this list, there are quite a few updates in this release, including a bunch of new visualization enhancements. I created this very clean, professional, and powerful dashboard with the latest version of Cognos. It demonstrates some of the key enhancements that I will be discussing and showing you in today's video. To get started, one of the first things I wanted to point out about this update are the custom templates. Let's say, for example, that we really like the layout of this dashboard and we want the option of using it again for future dashboards. We now have the option to save as a template. So if we went over to our save button, we now see that we have save as a template, which I've already done and saved in my templates folder. So if we use that template to create a new dashboard, it would look something like this. Having everything laid out where it was, except for the data. This update is particularly useful for developers like myself, case in point, today's presentation, because instead of reinventing the wheel every time, we can now jump right into our dashboards, which definitely increases efficiency. All we need to do now is just add the data and we're good to go. Let's begin with a combination chart, also known as the bar and line chart. One of the first things you'll notice about this update are these drop zones located around the uh, combination chart. Now originally we could drag and drop the data points from the table all the way over to the fields pane. And what they've done is they've updated it so where we can actually type it into the fields pane or we have the luxury of dragging and dropping directly onto this visualization itself. So if I wanted to populate mine, I would just take my order day of the week and my quantity for my column length and the segment for the column color. And then I'll take my sales for my line position. All right, now we have our data loaded, and this brings me to my next update, which is the title automatically populated, which is called the smart title feature. Uh, it's based upon the fields that we just added to this visualization, which definitely adds to efficiency. But if you don't like the title that uh, it populated for you, you definitely have the option of still going to the properties pane and changing uh, your title to create a custom title as well. Uh, next, let's say we wanted to create a stack chart from this clustered column chart. We can do that by going to the properties pane and under chart, we now have the option to display as a stack chart, which I personally love stack charts compared to clustered myself. But um, so thank you, IBM, for doing that. Um, next, we also have an option for the combination chart to uh, create a series for the line portion as well. So if we went back to our fields, we have the option of creating a line color or we can just add to the line position. And I wanna just add to the line position here. Um, I wanna see a year over year trend for, for sales. So let's go to our prior year sales and that will populate. And now we have our sales from last year, which actually brings me to the next enhancement. As you can see on Saturday, there's a data point that is kind of difficult to read. So this typically happens when we have uh, points of data that um, are much less or much greater than other data points in the visualization. So what IBM has done is they've allowed us to use the logarithmic scale for either, either series here, the column or the line. And that's over here in the bottom right. You can see that we have the column value axis logarithmic or the line value axis logarithmic scale. And for this particular chart, I'm gonna apply that to the line axis. And now we can see a clearer picture of our line series. The final enhancement for the combination chart is that we can now specify an axis range if we wanted to kind of narrow in on that. So if we went over to our axis pane over here, we see these four different um, place markers for where we can put a minimum or maximum value points for either the line or the column value axis. 
um, which according to Matt Denham has been a very much requested uh, feature for these updates. So just to give a quick example, you can just type in, let's say I wanted to see from you know 2000 to 6000 quantity. And then it'll narrow in on our visualization there for you. Moving to the next visualization will be the cross tab, which is particularly the one I was looking forward to the most. And let's begin by loading some data into these fields. And I'm gonna use the, the newer feature of typing in. So for the columns, I'm gonna do order year. And for the rows, I wanna compare regions here. And I wanna see sales and profit across my regions for different years. Okay, so now we have our data loaded. Where the enhancements really lie are within the conditional formatting under properties. So as we see, we have the um, conditional color and our available data points are sales and profit. So let's say, for example, that we know that our average sales are $140,000 and we wanna see which regions are performing above and below that average. So what we can do with this conditional formatting is we can add some rules. So we're gonna color conditional, uh, sorry, excuse me, we're gonna color sales by sales and we're going to do it by a numeric value. Now we can also do um, this conditional formatting by a percentage of a different value, which I'll, I'll get to in a moment. So let's just pick numeric for now. And let's say we wanna add a rule of anything greater than our $140,000 average would be green for money. And let's create a KPI indicator of above triangle for above average. And then we wanna do the same thing and apply that to less than 140,000. And let's make that red. I forgot to mention that you can add a fill color here. So I personally like gray, of course. And let's do a, a down arrow for this KPI indicator. Now, if we go back to our data points, the same can be applied to profit. And here's where I'm gonna use that other scale for percentage. So we have profit and I wanna color it by sales. So for example, let's say that I want to see which regions and which years uh, we had a gross profit margin of greater than 10% and less than 10%. So I would take percentage and I would add a new rule. And let's do if it's greater than 10% of sales. Let's change this to a smiley face because anything greater than 10% is considered average or decent for a gross profit margin. And next we have, let's say we have less than 10%. And let's make that red. And we'll do a sad face. Now that we have our data formatted based upon the conditional rules that I created, um, it's definitely very helpful um, to highlight problem areas much more efficiently than before. Um, plus it just really looks a lot better with a fresh coat of paint. So. Definitely a nice update there. Our next example is gonna be with the pie chart. Definitely a fan favorite for data analysis, but typically not as many fun features as with other charts. So let's load some data points here. Um, the segment was gonna be region. And the size was gonna be profit. Okay, so with this update, um, the biggest thing was that instead of just showing the values of the pie, um, we can now show both the values and the item um, within the pie. Now obviously we can change the label location, 
um, from the center to outside. Um, I particularly like to use the center horizontal, um, but it's just nice to know that we have that option um, based upon who we're working for or if there's a, um, a client that wants to see it a very specific style, uh, we definitely have the option now to do both. Moving along now to our next visualization, um, that would be our bullet chart. And the update really applies to the range colors. So if we add some data to this, I wanted to do, let's see, I wanted to do sales, year-to-date sales. And I want our target to be prior year-to-date sales. And I'm going to repeat this by row for each sales manager. And for the ranges, um, I've created some calculations that made sense relative to sales. So let's do our minimum. And then our middle range. And then our maximum range. This update is definitely a nice feature to have, um, particularly when we're getting a, a more clear understanding in regards to performance. Um, you know, for this particular example, uh, we see that most of our salesmen are on the maximum range um, and are definitely killing it. So. But let's move on to the next um, feature. So if we actually expand this, I wanted to show a feature that we have. And if we bring the data up here, we now have the option to export the visualization data as a CSV file. Um, we've always been able to show the disaggregated data, but now we can actually export the data to where it downloads to our download file. And we, we either can download the detailed data or the summary data for this visualization. Uh, but one important note to keep in mind is that you have to be in the edit mode in order for this feature to work properly. The next update that I wanted to talk about um, are called model filters. Um, in essence, it allows us to create a reusable filter. Um, so for example, let's say that we wanted to create a um, a filter for the state of Arizona. Um, under the table itself, we can create our filter here and right there, filter. And I'm going to call this Arizona filter. So we're going to set the state equal to Arizona. Let's validate this really quick. All right. Now what we can do with this uh, filter is we can drop it on the filter shelf or we can drag and drop it directly onto the visualization itself, which would filter it just like so. The next update is for all you SQL enthusiasts out there. I, for one, am a big fan of SQL. Um, a few releases ago, IBM added what is called the serviceability panel. And in order to get this panel to pop up, we simply press control period. And this will tell us basically what's going on behind the scenes for this dashboard. Um, one thing in particular that we're able to do with this uh, release is that we're able to see the SQL and the query information here. And this allows us to see the Cognos SQL and compare it to the native SQL, which is definitely a cool thing to nerd out on if you are a big SQL fan like myself. That pretty much covers all the updates that I wanted to share with you today. I hope all of you other developers out there are as excited as I am about these new updates. I wanted to close by saying two things. Thank you to everyone at IBM for all their hard work in making all these updates possible so that we developers are able to create such beautiful dashboards and visualizations for our clients. 
Please feel free to reach out to me via LinkedIn page if you need a professional or skilled developer as I am looking for potential Cognos roles. Links will be in the description below, and I really appreciate everyone who watched the video, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.